Hey guys, uh, welcome to my first YouTube video. Uh, my name is Audie Lovett and I have hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. And I, it's been a long time coming, but I've been wanting to make a video to tell you guys how I have successfully treated some of my, most of my head symptoms. Um, and I do that with vitamin C injections. So, uh, just to make sure to start out, I'm going to begin with my health history. I'm going to tell my whole story um, up until finding my, the first treatment that drastically improved my head symptoms. And of course, I have to start with the disclaimer of this is not medical advice. I'm just sharing my experience. I know um, if any of this interests you or sounds intriguing to you, you can take this information to your doctor and that's the person who can help you decide if this is something that you want to try. Uh, you have to get that out of the way. So I will go through my health history just to make sure that you can like understand how sick I was. And you know, if your story kind of looks a bit like mine has throughout the years, it might help you to kind of uh, decide if this is something that seems like something you might want to talk to your doctor about. Um, so let's start at the beginning and then we'll get to the good stuff, which is the treatment, of course. Um, so I was born the sick child of a chronically ill mother. My mom had, like a lot of us have this story of having a parent with like fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue. Um, my mom had tons of chronic, invisible, unexplained illness. She's never been diagnosed with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, but she has like a lot of the things that I have without having like the extreme joint hypermobility. I know that story is really common in our community. Um, so when I was born, I was the sixth child. And um, right from the beginning of my life, I had chronic ear infections um, and was on antibiotics like my entire childhood, on and off, on a lot though. <laughs> so I had tubes in my ears. Um, I remember like I have Lots of memories of just like screaming in pain through the night with ear infections that just wouldn't go away. And then from there, I kind of was just always sick with something. Like I, I don't remember a part of my childhood where I wasn't like recovering from an illness or recently having an illness. I think there was some years in school where like I missed half the days of school uh, just because I was always sick with like a flu, tonsillitis, different infections bladder infections, uh, like if I didn't have the flu, sometimes I would feel like I had the flu and then it would kind of like go away before becoming a full-time flu. So always felt sick, sinuses were always infected, my ears always hurt. Even if I didn't have an ear infection, like my ears would hurt if I'd go outside in the cold or whatever. Um, I had a hernia repair at three years old. I have notes here too, which is, you know, not ideal, but I really don't wanna miss anything in this video. And I get so many questions um, anytime I like make a comment on like a Facebook group or whatever. I get so many questions that I wanted to make sure that I get all of the information out here in one place. If for those who are interested. So um, if, right from when I was little, chronic fatigue. I remember thinking it was really like, I remember like looking at my cousins or my friends and, and thinking like, man, they have so much energy. Like how... How do people stand and walk around and and want to do it as long as people do because I was just always so tired F like school field trips I remember just if I was out in the heat at all I would just be exhausted and just want to sit down or lay down or find the shade or you know like just I just felt like I couldn't ever keep up with people um it, being in choir in junior high and standing on the risers in choir like I remember just standing there thinking, it it doesn't seem hard for other people just to stand. <laughs> and it was so hard for me just to stand for that time, that like short time period, just to be in choir in school was really like felt challenging for me. So I had that the heat intolerance as well. It was so hard to get out of bed in the morning, no matter how long I slept the night before, what time I'd go to bed it was like the most painful experience for me to get out of bed the next day. I never felt rested. I still like struggle with feeling rested after sleeping. I'm just, I was always so exhausted. I had 
Um, I was sure, like, right from when I was little that I had fibromyalgia, like my mom, because, like, the weather would change, I would ache, and sometimes I, sometimes I couldn't tell if I had the flu or if it was just the weather changing, and, like, sometimes I'd miss school because I was like, oh, I, I have the flu, and then it would kind of just, like, dissipate. Sometimes it would turn into a full infection, and then sometimes it would just kind of dissipate. Um, but it was always just kind of this, like, never, I never felt good. Um, I had the classic three, the eczema, allergies, and asthma, um, diagnoses when I was little. Um, my eczema is actually fine now. I had it for lots and lots of years. I still have pretty bad allergies, but my asthma also is like, it doesn't, that doesn't bother me at all anymore. Um, frequent infections, sore throat, sinus infections, my glands were like permanently swollen. I'd get tonsillitis all the time. Um, I'd get, I had strep throat a number of times. Um, just always, sinus is always infected. At least monthly, especially in the winter. Some, some winters, uh, I would just be sick one after the other and, and never be healthy for like a whole flu season, right? Um, anxiety, always since I can remember. Um, chemical sensitivity, sensitivity started probably like late, it, like at the end of elementary is when I kind of noticed that my, if my friends wore perfume, it would sting my nose and make my eyes water and then I'd get the headache and, um, and you know, I, and then it was like cleaners and everything else, anything scented, that kind of gradually got worse and worse till now. Like I don't, I never like being around scented products if I can help it. Um, so frequent bladder infections was another thing that I just kind of would get a lot like for, for a kid, it was just kind of like an abnormally large amount of times. Um, uh, IBS symptoms, as long as I can remember all of the, basically all of the symptoms that come with IBS, food intolerances to quite an extreme degree where like, I knew from the time I was a kid that milk and bread, um, eggs, like really, really, really bothered my stomach. But even other things, like even just normal food, I just was used to like, I kind of just thought it was normal to feel sick after you ate. I kind of thought that that's how people felt after they ate because I always felt really sick after I ate food and was always so bloated. It was like the joke with my friends that I looked six months pregnant after I had a meal. Um, and I had whooping cough, even though I was <laughs> immunized against it. I did get whooping cough my first year of college. That was, that was horrendous. But, um, anyone with whooping cough knows what that is like. Um, I had appendicitis. So I had an appendectomy when I was in grade, I think it was just after high school, after I finished high school. So kind of a lot of these things happened and got started getting really bad, like right after high school. Um, always hypermobile. I know one weird thing that I had is, um, I could never, I couldn't walk in flip flops because my feet would like, <laughs> they'd have to go like this. And so I'd have to step like, I don't know if anyone has experienced that or knows what I'm talking about, but it was kind of like this weird thing when flip flops came back in style when I was in junior high and I like was so excited to get a pair and then I, <laughs> could not walk in them. I still can't walk in them. Um, so, uh, I would always be like, if I went snowboarding or I remember I tried out for the rugby team in high school, um, and I ran track as well. And I, I remember just like, it's normal to get sore after you do these things, but I was so sore after doing exercise that like, I couldn't, I couldn't like get a cup out of the cupboard and some you can just like when something's like abnormal you just get this feeling of like I don't think this is how it is for other people it doesn't seem to be this way for other people and that was like one of the things I was like I feel like I get way more sore than a normal person does um no I hadn't had a diagnosis by this point I'll just add these were just all weird oddy things that I kind of grew up like knowing that there was some weird things about me, but, and knowing that my health wasn't normal or good, but not knowing that there was a genetic diagnosis coming for it all. Um, 
I had my first actual panic attack when I was 18. And I remember when it happened, um, I wasn't worried or stressed. It was like, a, it was just this physical response. My heart started pounding. I went up to my mom and I was like, mom, like, I think you need to take me to the hospital. Something's going on. And my heart is pounding out of my chest. And she checked and she was like, I think you're just having a panic attack. And so that's kind of when my anxiety uh, became like just a constant state for me um, in a really physical way. Like, so I had numbness, tingling, like electric shocks throughout my body all the time. And I had this like chronic physical state of anxiety, even though I didn't feel like my, my emotions or my thoughts matched up with the physical feelings that I was feeling, which I like, that was an interesting thing to know back then, because I do feel like a lot of our anxiety is like, comes from a very physical source in Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Now the thoughts, they do start to follow after you experience this for long enough. So I think it's not that the thoughts aren't there, but I just remember feeling like the thoughts weren't the source of all of this. Um, so my joint pain started when I was 19. It started in my knees. I was um, a fitness instructor, a newly married woman at 19. And uh, fitness was my passion. I taught like everything I could take training in I would teach high impact low impact lots of stuff that was like what I thought I was going to do for the rest of my life um and so and I was also in I'm in school for uh, to become a registered nurse and so when that started um everyone was like don't worry like knee pain is not a big deal I went to physio I did went to my doctor went to physio did all these things and everyone was like don't worry like this is just normal for people who exercise, but something told me that it was not just a, that it wasn't not a big deal. Something told me that it was a really big deal. Um, so I, so I really stressed about it and it went from my knees to my ankles and hips to then my feet started hurting really, really bad. And then it was my back shoulders it started just this pain just started be happening everywhere when you know typical story with Ehlers people know how that goes so um everything kind of continued to worsen at that point where I would add POTS to the to my list of symptoms and then uh, or, uh mast cell activation syndrome that kind of stuff like everything just kind of all the Ehlers stuff just kind of started piling on piling on but I still didn't have a diagnosis I did slow down on teaching fitness, um, barely made it through nursing school because my feet would hurt so bad during shifts and I was working 12 hour shifts that I, I like, it felt like the fascia on the bottom of my feet was just being ripped apart with every step. And I, I really didn't know how I was going to continue functioning like that. Um, but I'm, kind of stubborn um and so I, I finished just because I wanted I wanted to finish I didn't want to be a dropout and I especially didn't want to drop out because of my health I have been really stubborn with that in my life um and so I did finish nursing school I became a registered nurse I worked for about a year had three children and I never went back to nursing it just wasn't great for my body like the long shifts and um I would not be a great person to try and catch a falling patient because of my joint problems and um and so I didn't go back I continued to teach fitness uh but kind of modified did less impactful things taught less often and through the years kind of just did did what I could do but I stuck it out as long as I could um so in those years before getting a diagnosis um and having, while well, I was having three kids, um, I did all the things that we do, we do, you know, we go down the list of all the things that we can try. So I went to the chiropractor and had ART therapy. I had uh, physiotherapy from a number of people with different modalities, kind of trying to figure out how to help my body get out of this pain and function better. I had acupuncture, I tried like an elimination diet, I tried so many different supplements that are recommended. I saw 
every specialist that my doctor would like let me go to like different orthopedic specialists and everything and I got the typical I know I know you guys know this I got the um this is psychosomatic nothing's wrong this is this is in your head anyway I think I feel like we could have a whole other YouTube video on the diagnosis part um, I know how many people struggle with that but that's for another video we'll get into that um, at 26 so um, after my third baby was she was uh, maybe a year at that point if I remember right um, she uh, I tried to think of what would the medical term be for the joints that I have and I just happened to think okay they're hypermobile like what the word the right words came into my mind and I, I googled hypermobile joints and I swear within 60 seconds um I knew exactly what my diagnosis was because of course Ehlers-Danlos syndrome came up there and I it was like bang like I knew exactly that that was what was going on. So I did ask my doctor for a referral to a geneticist and I saw an incredible geneticist. It's amazing how when you find the right specialist, what a difference that makes. The problem is when you don't even know what, what, uh, like what specialist to ask for. It's, it's hard to know who you need to see. Um, and so, yes, he confirmed the diagnosis. Um, he, and he was fantastic. One of the, one of the best things that he did, um, for me was he said, have you been told that you're crazy your whole life? <laughs> I was like, absolutely I have. And he, he was like, well, I'm here to tell you that you're not. And, um, I, I, we're a group of people who can understand how powerful those words can be. Anyway, I'm getting emotional tonight and I didn't expect to at all because things are pretty good right now. Um, but it's an emotional, it's an emotional story, you guys know. Um, okay, so my geneticist, he had me on a mitochondrial cocktail I can't even remember what was all in it, but it was basically a combination of different supplements that he said may or may not help about 20% if it does help. So uh, I tried that for a long time and I, when I try something, I try to stick it out for about six months, depending on what it is. But that's usually like my, my range of how long I'll try something for before I decide if it's worth sticking to or not. I have had things that I've done for a lot longer. For example, I did do prolotherapy and I did prolotherapy for about three years. We spent a lot of money on prolotherapy. We spent tens of thousands of dollars on prolotherapy. Um, I have, I had someone here that I was seeing for prolo um, who also did like did regular prolo and then did PRP, prolotherapy. But I also flew to Chicago more than once to see Dr. Ross Hauser. That costs a lot of money. Um, and I did PRP with him, if I remember right, but for sure, I know that I did stem cell therapy with Dr. Hauser, which is supposed to be like the gold standard of prolotherapy. And I am not knocking prolotherapy in any way. I personally know and have friends with Ehlers that have had profound benefits with prolotherapy. It didn't do anything for me in three years, sadly. I was so hopeful that I would. And at the time, I felt like that was my last resort. So I put everything into it. And I tried it for way, way longer than I should have. Like, I should have stopped a year in, not three years in. And I also feel like, yeah. So um, I did do prolo, PRP, stem cells. I saw a hormone specialist and we worked on hormones. I had genetic testing done and then I, I had um, like a phone consult with a doctor who goes through your genetic testing and, and recommends supplements based on your genetics. Um, and like I said, all of these things I, I, I kind of went the distance with, like I didn't just try for a few weeks. I tried for, I try at least six months with everything that I did, that I do. Um, I did IV vitamin therapy. I did, um, 
lots of different types of diets and I and I am have been careful with my diet through most of my adult life. I continue with exercise. I really, really believe strongly in the benefits of exercise and so modified exercise. Like there was times in my life where all I could do was Pilates and that's what I did. Um, and then I did try a lot of people with Ehlers are familiar with the CUSAC protocol and I did try that and I was so hopeful that that was going to be the answer. I'm so happy for Deborah and the people that that has benefited that that has worked for them. I'm so glad it, it didn't help me, didn't make any noticeable changes, I should say, for me. Um, so uh, <laughs> in 2016, my life changed a lot. Um, my husband and I, we own a company that builds custom luxury playhouses, and we ended up signing on to host a reality show. Uh, it's called Playhouse Masters. And that was in 2016. And um, I was really struggling with my health. And I, but I also really didn't want to pass up the opportunity to like further our business. And um, it was an exciting prospect. And so I did something that I've never done before because a lot of us are sensitive to meds. I've known since I was little, I'm extremely sensitive to medications. And so I've never really... I've never used them when I haven't really like had like other than surgery and and times that I really felt like that I needed things and then antibiotics when I was little and stuff. Um, but I have always kind of tried not to take things because I, I just the side effects are usually outweigh any benefits that I get. That's just the way that my body is. Lots of you, I'm sure, can relate to that. Um, but I needed to get through like filming 12 hours a day, six days a week and have a big smile on my face and energy. And so I did something that I had never done before and I asked my doctor to give me something for pain to get through that experience. Um, and so he gave me Tramacet, which I quickly, which helped at first so well. Um, but I had to be on Ativan with it and it was very like, it, like I kind of got to the max dose I could take really quickly and then had to switch over to tramadol because I couldn't start weaning off of it while we were in the middle of filming season one. I had to like, I, I couldn't, I couldn't, my schedule was too crazy and the demands on me were too intense to do that. So, um, so I ended up staying on them for the full time that we were filming for about a year. Um, but I had the rebound effect to an extreme, which the rebound effect is basically when you get to the max dose of those pain meds and then suddenly they, your pain starts being magnified. And so I, my pain became like something I couldn't even imagine. I was hurting inside out. I had not just joint pain, but like muscle pain. I had nerve pain. I had pain I couldn't even understand. These were the worst years of my life by far. Um, and as soon as we were done filming, I'm like, like I told you guys, I'm really stubborn. As soon as we were done filming, I went off of them, but I had to wean off slowly because it felt like they were going to, like I would die if I didn't. Um, and I, it took me about a year to withdraw, a year on and then a year to withdraw. And that withdrawal year was like hell on earth. If you guys have done it, you know what that's like. Um, I won't get into all of those symptoms, but like it was, it was horrendous, not something that I will ever do again. And, uh, just not the right route for me. It's not for me to say if it's like the wrong route for everybody, but definitely for me, not the way that I can deal, manage pain at all. So, um, after the withdrawal, I did start feeling, um, more like myself and I started feeling better uh but I was still sick with Ehlers-Danlos syndrome like I wasn't sick with this like opioid withdrawal anymore but I was still sick with my genetic disorder so I like began searching for um new ways of healing and I kind of got into uh like the 
healthy lifestyle hype, which I still am in and still love and believe in. So I got into plant-based eating. I got into other things like um, other supplements. Uh, I like using the infrared sauna. I love meditating and I made sure to exercise um, as much as my body could handle it. At that time, I was lifting really light weights and cycling on the bike, like just really moderately, <laughs> nothing intense. I couldn't handle anything super intense. And so um, I was kind of determined to live such a healthy lifestyle that, you know, I could do whatever I was capable of healing, I would heal to the best of my ability. And I was really pumped about that. Um, and so I, oh, my pages are just me me messed up here. I was really excited about that. And so I kind of didn't pursue anything else at that time because I was just excited to heal um, in a natural way. So in 2017, I found a blog, and I'll link it below. It is called lessflexible.com, written by my now very, very dear friend and hero, Medora Peddington. Um, she is incredibly smart, articulate, and she's really funny as well. And she has Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Um, I found her blog and I contacted her and it turned out, um, she, when I found her blog in the beginning, in 2017, she was blogging about how she had been treating her Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome really successfully with amino acid injections. And so I contacted her. By the time that I contacted her, she had figured out that it was not the amino acids in the injection that were helping her, but it was something that they had added to the injection and they just didn't realize that that's what was healing her. And what was healing her was that was the vitamin C that they had added just to, just for like additional health, right? Cause vitamin C is good for you. So they added it to this injection. So, um, so, so she explained to me, no, it wasn't the amino acids. It was actually the vitamin C in the injection. I, that's what I do. I'm still doing daily injections of vitamin C and it's still helping me. And I'm getting more and more improvements as I go. And I remember like thinking, and keep in mind at this time, I had tried so many things and I had heard of people who, uh, found health in so or found healing in so many different ways. I'd been crushed so many times. I had experienced the placebo effect so many times and the placebo effect never lasts very long. It's like a few weeks in and I can usually tell like, okay, no, it's really not working. Like that's just me hoping it was working or whatever. Um, and to hear that vitamin C was what did it. I was like, oh, I was really bummed because amino acids like that sounded, that sounded plausible, but vitamin C injections that just sounded like, whatever. Like I was eating plant-based too, mind you. And so I was getting more vitamin C for breakfast than most people are getting in an entire day. So to think that more vitamin C was going to help me, like I, I kind of, it was too good to be true. It didn't, it didn't sound real, even though Medora, like I knew she was, I knew it was working for her. I believed her. I believed what she said, but I was like, oh, I just don't think this is my answer. Um, and I was taking vitamin C supplements at the time too. And so it was like, oh, I'm taking vitamin C, like what, what difference is, and I had been doing vitamin C IVs weekly for months. So that was another reason why it just didn't seem like that could, could ever have the results that she was describing for me. Um, but <laughs> I'm stubborn and desperate <laughs> and willing to try anything. So I did ask my doctor about it. I asked another, my other doctor about it and I asked my naturopath about it. All three of them said, no, <laughs> we are not giving this to you. My doctor said, that's not, a, that's not something we do. You'll have to talk to your naturopath. My naturopath um, was like, well, no, I'm giving you this in an IV. What difference would it make? to inject it intramuscularly like like I'm not doing that it's 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 not going to do anything different it's going to hurt real bad um and I was so excited about my new lifestyle at the time like I had 
conquered, uh, like withdrawal from pain meds. Um, and I was feeling like myself again, you know, whatever version of myself I, I'm used to. <laughs> and so I kind of just let the idea go. But, and I, I was doing really well with what I was, with what I could do with my diet and my exercise and mindfulness, everything I could kind of like get my hands on to try. I was trying, but my health was still slowly declining after that time. And it continued to decline for a few more years. It was April 2019 when this story really actually begins. The good part of the story begins. So um, by this time, I'll tell you where I was at. <clears throat> I was bedridden half to three quarters of the day. I had quit exercising. I could not lift weights. My hands couldn't even grip the weights. They would hurt so bad. They would just this buzzing, aching, searing pain, and then my joints would hurt so bad, I just didn't want to ever move them. So like, being bedridden is one thing, but then not having the use of your hands, you really are useless, because I couldn't even, I couldn't even be in my bed working from a computer. Like, I work with my husband, and I, I didn't even feel like I could do that, because my hands, I couldn't even use my hands. Um, my symptoms included muscle joint, nerve pain everywhere, head to toe, inside and out. Really severe tinnitus. Um, and of course, lots of these things were, were building through the years, but I'm just letting you know, like, this is where I was at when I tried this new treatment. Um, head pressure. Oh, the head symptoms might be the worst. Extreme headaches that never ended. Like, when someone would say, I have a headache, it was like, I don't even know what it's like to not have a headache anymore. Um, brain fog, forgetfulness, <sighs> tons of mental symptoms, you guys, like um, anxiety and depression. Um, anxiety is my go-to. Depression is not usually like my go-to. Um, but when the anxiety gets so bad for so long, then I, you know, kind of start shutting down. Um, lightheadedness, weakness, dizziness, faintness. Like I felt like I just couldn't sit or stand for very long without just feeling like, oh, I just have to lay down. Um, uh, like premenstrual dysphoric disorder, uh, where just kind of all of those symptoms would just worsen so much right before my period. I had heart palpitations, shortness of breath, chest pain, chest tightness. Uh, my pot symptoms were so bad to where like, I didn't want to, I didn't even want to sit up because it felt so horrible to sit up, let alone if I stood or walked. Walking was better than standing. If I had to stand still, it was just like, it was so stressful. Um, mast cell activation syndrome. I was itching head to toe, inside and out, and it just it just drove me crazy, especially at night. I would just feel like I was itching constantly. Um, frequent illnesses and infections, like which I'd been dealing with since I was a kid, but they kind of uh, got worse around then. Um, joint dislocations, which are really scary. Um, and mine aren't as bad as a lot of people's with Ehlers, but what would dislocate for me is I'd wake up in the morning with my jaw dislocated and I'd have to like slowly go like that and it would just pop and hurt so badly. Um, and I had to be careful eating. I remember even sometimes my teeth were getting loose in my mouth. I had to be so careful about what I ate because of my teeth and my jaw. Um, and my ribs would fully dislocate and that felt horrible everything else was subluxing all the time my joints were like grinding cracking i was sure that i had arthritis um but i i never wanted to get x-rays i did get x-rays in my 20s but i didn't want to find out about the arthritis so i just kept putting it off so i never did go find out but you could hear my joints were like, would grind, pop, crack. Um, they sounded and felt horrible. Um, uh, numbness and tingling throughout my whole body, that was just kind of worsening. Severe fatigue to the point where I didn't, like, it felt like I couldn't do anything in the day. Um, chemical and medication sensitivities were worsening. My food sensitivities were worsening worsening. I was so bloated. Um, 
so chronic ir irritable, irritable bowel syndrome. I had low iron, low B12, low carnitine. Um, and so at this point, I just thought I've got nothing left on my list of things to try except this ridiculous vitamin C thing. <laughs> so I went back to my naturopath. Actually, what we did was we, uh, yeah, I went, I went back to my naturopath and the first time that I had asked my naturopath, he said no, um, he didn't want me to try it, but he said, if you're still desperate in a little while, come back. So it was about two years later, I came back and I said, please just let me try this. If it doesn't work, I'll stop. But can we just try it? And he said yes, reluctantly. Um, and I kind of just thought to myself, if this last thing doesn't work, I'm resigning myself. I'm accepting this illness and I will, you know, make the best of what I can from my bed because that's all I can do at that point that's how it felt and it really truly felt like this is the last thing to try sorry guys sun's going down so I hit the lights on um so he sent me home with this bottle of ascorbic acid I don't know how well you can see any of the information on there or a bottle like this um, a 500 milligram per mil ascorbic acid, um, syringes with multiple sizes of needles, um, alcohol swabs, and sterile water to mix with the ascorbic acid. Um, so I had been a registered nurse, so it wasn't like giving an injection was new to me. That was kind of a nice bonus from... A lot of years of school and so I was familiar with how to give an intramuscular injection but um, these hurt really bad I think everyone wants to know what the downside is and that's kind of the main downside is they do they hurt really bad ascorbic acid is acidic so um, what I do is I went I had a lot of advice from Medora's blog and so I went in really prepared. Um, I went really slow at first with, I only put point, like a quarter of a mil, 0.25 mils in three quarters of a mil of sterile water. And I worked my way up to doing more ascorbic acid very, very slowly. Um, and I recommend doing it as slowly as possible, like building that up as slowly as possible. Um, today I do three mils, sometimes only two. I did work my way up to three mils and usually actually now I only do two mils of ascorbic acid just because it's just a large volume to put in your muscles every day. I wish, I actually wish I could do more, but I like also, you know, don't want to push, push my body too hard. Um, I inject in my rectus femoris muscles, my ventral gluteal and my dorsal gluteal sites. So I'm not going to get into landmarking where that is because that's, I like, if that, if this is, um, an area you go, you have to be taught that by a professional in person. Um, I alternate sites daily. So I go right to left and then the different sites every day to give each site a rest in between. And I inject mine in the shower because they hurt really bad and I feel like the warm water uh, like loosens up my muscles and then I can warm up the injection. You never ever want to inject this cold. It will hurt a thousand times worse. So I can warm up the injection in the shower. Um, I So I warm it up. I warm up the site that it's going in. I swab the area. I inject extremely slowly. You do not want to plunge quickly. It hurts. Um, and then like I put the area that I've injected back in the warm water just because it feels so much better to have that warm water right there as I'm going through this process. So I use an 18 gauge needle to draw up, like I put it on the syringe, right? Draw up with an 18 gauge needle and then I switch to a 25 gauge 
one inch needle for the actual injection. And the reason is this is so viscous that you need the big needle to draw it up, but you do not want to inject with the big needle. You'll have a hole in your body. <laughs> um, you don't want to do that. And so um, you inject with the little one and it's, it's, it, it's, it's tolerable, but I am also kind of a, I'm willing to do what I have to do kind of a girl in all of this. And so, um, not everyone has chosen to, to go this route cause it hurts. Um, this is stored in the fridge and it is multi-use. So I swab it every single time I use it and it is not overly expensive. Um, with my naturopath, this caught, this lasts me about a month and it costs me $80 with my, or no, not with my syringes. My syringes are, aren't very expensive, but this cost me about $80 a month through my naturopath. But if I switch, I'm in Canada. If I switch to a doctor who will prescribe it, which I think I actually just found one, um, that I'm switching over to, it will only cost me $20 a month. So um, $20 for significant ehlers downloads relief is a very small price to pay considering prices that we've paid for things that have been completely ineffective, painful, blah, blah, blah. So, I mean, we want to talk about pain. Prolotherapy is one of the most painful things I've ever done. So this is actually a small amount of pain compared to that. And this has worked so much better for me and has been so much cheaper. Um, let's talk what happened after I began? Um, this is the good part of the story. This is the good news. So within a week of these injections, I felt the difference in my pain. And I said to my husband, I was like, I think this is it. And I was so scared to get my hopes up because you guys know medical trauma sucks and it sucks the hope out of you. And it is really hard to stay hopeful when you have had your hopes up and then dashed so many times. And when you have so much riding on the success of the thing that you're trying. Um, but I, I was pretty sure, and I am well familiar with the placebo effect, you guys. And so I know the difference now because now I've done something that, that has worked for me and I've done a million things that haven't. I know the difference between the placebo effect and a real effect. So I feel well educated in that area. <laughs> um, within two weeks, I knew I was going to get my life back. And within three weeks, I was back at the gym um, lifting weights again. Three weeks, three weeks in, I never thought I would lift weights again. Um, and I was lifting heavy weights. I was right back to like, go pushing myself as hard as I could with weights. Um, over the next six months, the following um, improved drastically. So my joint muscle and nerve pain improved, has improved immensely. I have even had something that I never thought I would have, which is a pain-free day. A day where I didn't even notice any pain. Those are the best days. The days where I don't even think about it because I never thought I would have another pain-free day ever in my life. Um, I have not had one joint dislocation since I started this. I have not had my jaw or my ribs dislocate once since last April, April 2019, not once. Um, my head pressure and my headaches are not a constant. They're, they don't, I still get them, but it's reduced greatly and I don't always have it. My pot symptoms in, improved drastically. My anxiety and depression did improve over those six months, um, but there is a follow-up to that. Um, my fatigue improved so, so, so much. My immune system improved tons. I was like, I didn't feel like I was getting sick anymore. My swollen glands like stopped being swollen. Um, and I started working out five or six days a week, lifting weights. And I even started occasionally going for a run. I had not ran since I was 19 years old, maybe 18, 18 or 19. 
and I went for like a couple 30, I, a few 30 minute runs. I can still run like now if I feel like it. I just usually don't feel like it because there's stuff that I like doing more, but I never thought that I would run again. Um, I can be up all day from morning until night with minimal pain and fatigue and I can get done what I want to get done in a day. And um, I mean, that's the most important thing is I felt like I got to be a mother again. I got, I remember that first summer after this. Um, so last summer, I, uh, we went horseback riding with our kids. And like, that's just something that I just, I had written off so many things that I just never thought that I would get to do again. Um, and that was such a big deal to me. Um, something that was really cool is my geneticist had his, has his like, uh, blood work that he likes to do with his Ehlers-Danlos syndrome patients and he had done carnitine he had tested my carnitine carnitine's an amino acid and mine was low which is normal in Ehlers-Danlos syndrome patients and I went and saw him the summer after I started this uh treatment told him what I was doing which uh he couldn't advocate for because he had no research to back it up or anything but he sat there and talked about it with me for a really long time and he was supportive without encouraging me to continue if that makes sense right you guys get it um and he was like well it'd be interesting to see what your carnitine looks like um now and so he reran that blood work and my carnitine that was low before was normal. So that was really cool because I did the research on that and it looks like you need vitamin C to make carnitine. So it was just kind of like another indicator of like, yeah, there's a reason that this is having such a great benefit and doing a lot for me. He phoned and he said, um, that my carnitine was normal now and that I had another um, lab that he had done that indicated that my body was no longer in oxidative stress. And he's like, we'll just keep doing what you're doing. Cause I haven't really seen this before. <laughs> and that was really cool to get like, you know, these little indications that I'm on the right track with things. Um, uh, there, the risks I've talked about with, I've talked about this with all of my doctors and None of them are like jumping on board like, yeah, you should do this, but they've kind of listened and been supportive and I think believed me for the most part, especially two of my specialists have been like incredibly uh, supportive, even though they aren't willing to prescribe it themselves. Um, so the risks are kidney stones from taking a large amount of vitamin C and then infection at the injection site, which is just a normal risk for taking an injection. Um, I haven't had issues with kidney stones, but like that's something that everybody has to weigh out for themselves. Um, it hurts like hellfire. <laughs> I wish it didn't, but it does. Um, there's ways of making it a little bit better, but sometimes, sometimes it's fine. And then sometimes they hurt really bad. And I know not everyone likes injections, but, um, if you're stubborn like me, I don't know. I feel like I could get through just about anything to get what I want at this point. Um, sometimes they will swell up a little bit worse than others. And I know with, with my Ehlers, I swell up really bad all the time with anything that would be like a normal blunt force on a normal person. Like they wouldn't have swelling. I'll swell up like crazy. Um, so sometimes mine will swell up and I know I have a family member who did try this and Hers just swelled up really, really bad for some reason. Mine, mine are doable and hers haven't been. So um, I just kind of want to put that out there. Medora has not had any major issues that I know of. And she's been doing this for seven years. And I will note that her improvements have continued through the years. Like she hasn't stopped getting better for the past seven years, which is really, really cool. Uh, it is hard to find a doctor to prescribe this for many people. Although since I've kind of spoken to a few people about it online, 
people have found doctors to prescribe it. I just found one. I just have to go. I still have to go in and see him, but um, I know he is willing to do it. Um, uh, I talked about the cost already. There is no research from the company that makes this on doing it long term. So like, I don't have a study to show you like this is safe long term. They will not tell you that it's safe long term. From where I was to where I am now, for me, it's a no brainer that this is the route that I'm going to go, but it is the risk that I'm willing to take with, you know, my naturopath on board and then my doctor on board in the future. Um, there is no readily available testing for vitamin C in Canada. It degrades too quickly um, to test for it. However, this summer, and this is going to be kind of like the con the content for my next video because there is more to the story than just this video. Um, I did pay for extensive testing from a private lab in Georgia. It was called the company is called Genova, um, and I and they don't test for vitamin C, but they test for three other indicators. And if if these three indicators are out of whack, and I won't get into too much of it here because I will in my next video, um, then it shows that your vitamin C is low. And I went off my vitamin C for two weeks, two or three weeks before I took that lab test because I wanted to know what my results would look like without taking it. And I had all three indicators of my body requiring vitamin C. Um, so that was kind of exciting and it's good to have, like, it's just so nice. Like I know what's going on in my body, but it's so nice to have documentation that shows that I'm not, you know, just experiencing a placebo effect or because I'm not like my results have been so unbelievably drastic so quickly. I can feel the lack, like I can feel, um, the negative results if I miss a day, if I miss my shot that day, I can feel it. And in those two weeks that I missed, holy cow, I felt the difference so quickly. And if you think about it, I mean, I'm taking, I took high dose vitamin C for over a year via intramuscular injection, went off of it for two weeks. And the lab test showed that my body was requiring vitamin C. So I think it was like, it's a pretty big need that we have. And it's interesting because if you look at the symptoms of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, Adora talks about this in her blog a bit too. It looks like scurvy. Like a lot of what we deal with looks very similar to scurvy. Like it looks like a vitamin C deficiency. And then based on the results I get from supplying my body with adequate vitamin C, I think, you know, my speculation and I joke about all the time, like, I have scurvy, like I'm the only girl on this planet with, <laughs> in this modern world with the pirate's disease, but I mean, that's what it looks like. I don't, but it's a different type of scurvy. It's not a, I'm not eating vitamin C scurvy. It's a, why am I not absorbing vitamin C? So that's kind of my um, speculation in all of this is, I think there's an absorption issue with vitamin C and other stuff, but that is, for the next video that I will get into part two of the absorption issues. And I think there's even going to be a part three because um, lots is going down in my health right now for the good. Um, so yeah, is this an absorption issue that we have? Are we not absorbing vitamin C? Is it a subset of us with Ehlers-Danlos syndrome? Is it all of us? I have no answers. So I can't say, I know that Medora had drastic results. I know that I had drastic results. Um, but we're going to have to wait and hear if other people are as well. And I can't make any promises or even any guesses as to how many people will have the results that I had from this. So um, just because I hear this all the time, like, why not try liposomal vitamin C? Why not try IV vitamin C? Like there's easier ways than an intramuscular injection to get it in your body. Why not just high dose oral? And I want to just like reiterate, I did high dose oral vitamin C for 
years because I know that it's recommended in Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. So like I did, that was just normal part of my life for years. Also, I eat an incredible amount of vitamin C. I eat a lot of fruit and a lot of vegetables. Um, I did try the liposomal C before I went this route because I like to exhaust all conservative options before I up the game to the crazy stuff. Um, that did not do anything. At least six months I tried it. And I did do IV vitamin C's weekly for, it was probably close to eight months to a year that I did that for. I'd have to look at my records, but I did it for a long time never felt a, a physical difference. Now, I think, I don't know if that's because, I think that the IV probably is being absorbed, but I think because vitamin C degrades so quickly that it's one of those things that you need every day. So I don't think it's the route that the IV doesn't work. I think it's that it's not practical for me to go in and get a daily IV financially or time-wise. Like, I, I just can't go do that. Um, well, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I'd rather just be able to give myself a needle at home and save the money. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of speculation here. <laughs> it's all I can give you. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, will this work for everyone? I don't know. I wish I did. But all I can do is share my results and offer that information to you because I'm so grateful that Medora shared that information with me because it, it altered my life completely. Um, so that's that's the story of my vitamin C. If you if you have any questions, I'm thinking the easiest way to get into contact with me is via Instagram. I'm my name is at always Audie, always spelled like spelled normal, and Audie is A U D Y. And so I think that's probably the easiest place to message me if you have questions. If there's enough questions because there I usually get quite a few if I even comment like online on something about this um I might do like a live or something where I answer people's questions about this so yeah you can go find me there um and I want to just say I did have another um kind of like health crisis about six months into this um, I didn't lose my vitamin C benefits at the time, but I had some other issues associated with the Ehlers-Danlos that got, that started getting really, really, really bad. And I think that I know why that was, but I will start, I will just finish by saying vitamin C deficiency was only the beginning of deficiencies in this body. <laughs> Um, and I will get into that in the next video, but there was, I didn't realize that that would be just the beginning and that there was more things to figure out to come. And sometimes those things only come via health crisis. And then I get, and then my OCD just kind of is insistent that we're going to figure it out. And so I do my best to figure out whatever I can. Um, so yeah, contact me via Instagram. Otherwise, stay tuned and I will get another video up here talking about what came next in the last few months that has also been equally as incredible for my health. Um, and it was another, it was another deficiency that I had to uh, supplement in a non-traditional way. <laughs> So that's it, you guys. Uh, thank you for watching. If you have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome or chronic invisible illness, I'm so sorry. It's tough, I know. Um, I, I think hope is so important for us. And I don't wanna be here saying that I have the answers for you or minimizing how hard these things are, but I did feel like it was my job to share my story because I'm so grateful for Medora for sharing hers. Um, and it's like a small little thing that I can put out into the universe and just cross my fingers that it helps someone deal with this truly horrible illness. Um, there's always hope. I really do believe in the power of hope and um, let's get in touch. Stay tuned for the next video and thanks for watching.